해주신 특별한 분들이 있습니다. 바로 시작이 될 텐데요. 잠깐 자리에 좀 착석 부탁드리겠습니다. 오늘 특별한 분이 있습니다. 볼레나 젤렌스카 우크라이나 영부인을 올해 ALC에 정말 어렵게 모시게 되었습니다. 직접 축사를 전달해 주시겠는데요. It's my honor to introduce Madam First Lady Olena Zelenska of Ukraine. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with a big round of applause. gentlemen, dear friends, I'm glad to be here today in person and I'm grateful that you don't stay aside Ukraine and Ukrainians. There are 7,000 kilometers between Ukraine and Korea, but these kilometers will not prevent our mutual understanding. We are close. I often have to tell the world what Ukraine is going through because of Russian attack. How children study in the bomb shelters. How people spend the night in the subway because of missile attacks. How no one knows wh whether they wake up in their own bed in the morning or lie under the rubble of their house. To stop these horrors, we should explain to countries and people what it's like to see their hometown in ruins, what it's like to be frightened by loud noises because of a missile or a fighter jet. But I do not need to explain this to the people of South Korea, because you know and remember what it is like to fight for your lives and freedom. Looking at beautiful Seoul today, it is hard to believe that it was once in ruins, just as the Ukrainian cities of Mariupol and Bakhmut now, that it was just subjected to deadly bombardment, just as Kherson now. And I want to tell you about this particular city because it has gone through everything that Seoul went through, occupation, torture and repression of its residents, liberation. And now it's enduring Russian attacks every day. We have calculated that Kherson region is now shelled by Russia 360 times a week on average, 50 times a day. Imagine what it takes to live in this city, the city where there are 50 chances to die every day. I still see in front of my eyes Kherson supermarket and the market, bombed by Russians two weeks ago, with blooded visitors and staff. That day alone, more than 20 people were killed by Russian missile terror. I still see in front of my eyes a bus stop that was destroyed by a Russian air raid. People were just going to walk, but four of them were left lying there. I still see in front of my eyes six Ukrainian rescuers, people who are clearing mine traps left by Russians in the fields around the city every day. This group was recently killed by Russian shelling, but the next day, their colleagues came to work to continue clearing their homeland so that no one loses their limbs stepping on mines laid by the occupiers. How do you live in Ukraine under the constant threat of death? Korean journalists asked me the other day. And here I have another example from Kherson. The Russian, Russians recently shelled the station when a regular passenger train was departing. Its crew were wounded. But this train went on its way and arrived on time. 
it was greeted with applause. This is the image of the whole life of Ukrainians now. Every day, we risk being killed in our own homes, at our own workplaces, but we do our work. Like the train, we have to keep going. I have to say that we are grateful to Korean people for sharing our pain and for all your support. And we are grateful to President Yoon for his recent words that humanitarian aid alone may not be enough when civilians are being killed. This is a wise insight. When there, are, there is a criminal in your house who has come to kill your family, humanitarian aid alone will not save the residents. The first thing to do is to stop the murderer. In the case of Kherson, it could be air defense systems. Technologically advanced and effective, like everything your country creates and produces. We also need to stop the murderer, Russia. That's why we say that we need victory, not an abstract ceasefire. Moreover, this is not only our grief and a threat not only to us. This is a violation of international rules of co coexistence. In attack, in an attack of one country on the northern, disturbing precedent for everyone. And there is no longer some others worse in the modern world. A stone thrown creates ripples. If civilians are killed, it can happen anywhere. Therefore, those who are attacked have the right to defend themselves. They have the right to stop the violence. Today in Ukraine, not only the future fate of security in Europe is being decided, but also that of the entire world, the American, European, and Asian regions. Therefore, we cannot, we have no right to be a victim for the sake of others. We must win so that no dictator can blackmail neighbors with the nuclear weapons or impose his will on other states. So that no bigger neighbor thinks it has the right of power to offend the smaller one. You knew this much earlier than others from your own experience. I thank Korea for this understanding. At the beginning of my speech, I was talking about so. I dream of seeing Kherson like this as well, as all the destroyed cities in Ukraine, restored, strong, flourishing, full of life, which is not threatened by anything. You once gained this right by showing that truth triumphs over force and aggression. Your example is one of those that inspire us. For Ukraine, Korea has always been a leader in technology and development. And it can now become a model of leadership in helping to return peace to the world. You can become a leader of humanity. And this is also our common value. We all want our people, our nations, to live. Let it be so. Thank you. Thank you for insightful speech, Madam First Lady Zelenska. Many must have sympathized with this message for peace. 네, 올레나 젤렌스카 영부에 있는 다시 한번 말씀 감사드립니다. 네, 평화를 위한 메시지에 분명 많은 분들이 공감하셨을 겁니다. 정말 위중한 시기에 정말 어렵게 모시게 되었습니다. 네, 
다음으로는 비록 이 자리에 함께 하지 못했지만 저희 행사를 위해서 멀리서 축하 메시지를 보내온 분들이 계십니다. 먼저 안토니오 구테흐스 UN 사무총장님을 만나보겠습니다. We have received congratulatory remarks from the speakers for today's event. First, let me introduce Mr. Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations. I send my warmest greetings to the Asian Leadership Conference. Your team, the hero of upheaval and the road to collaboration and innovation, addresses the pivotal question of our age. We are living through troubled times. The climate crisis continues unabated. New conflicts are breaking out. Old ones greened on. Geopolitical tensions are rising, and nuclear disarmament is at a standstill. Poverty, hunger, and inequality are increasing. And the Sustainable Development Goals, our blueprint for peace and prosperity on a healthy planet, are far off track. Every day brings warnings of the dangers of unregulated new technologies. And all these issues are global. No country can solve them alone. And yet our collective problem-solving mechanisms do not match the pace or scale of the challenges. We at United Nations are working to bring countries together to address these gaps in global governance and to find solutions. Our initiative, known as Our Common Agenda, proposes a reformed multilateralism that is fairer and more inclusive, that addresses new risks and threats, and that will protect our planet for the benefit of future generations. Even in this era of upheaval, countries have shown they can work together for the common good. The past year has seen agreement to compensate for the loss and damage caused by the climate crisis and the new global biodiversity framework. Global leaders will decide how to turbocharge the SDGs, fill gaps in global governance, and address new risks at a series of important summits, starting with the SDG Summit in September. Building on this, the Summit of the Future next year will consider how to take forward many of the proposals in our common agenda. And the Asian Leadership Conference is an important opportunity to tackle these issues and find collaborative, innovative solutions. And I wish you a successful conference. 네, 큰 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. Thank you for sharing inspiring vision with us. 네, 귀한 시간 내주시고 직접 영상으로 축하해 주셨는데요. 네, 다음 분도 기대되는 분이죠. 낸시 펠로시 전미 하원 의장님께서도 축하 메시지를 보내 오셨습니다. Next, we will meet Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, the former Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. 네, 큰 박수 부탁드립니다. Good morning. As Speaker of America of the United States House of Representatives, it is my privilege to address the Distinguished Asian Leadership Conference occurring in a great democracy, the Republic of Korea. This important gathering convenes many respected leaders from all over the globe coming together each year to discuss the most pressing issues facing the world and to inspire younger generations to pave the road to collaboration and innovation. I salute the many college students in attendance, especially the young women we are the next generation of leaders preparing to step forward and receive the torch as we carry on our mission of building a better world. Today, we see dictators gaining power, resurgence of attempts to restrict free speech and religious liberties, ruthless assaults on sovereignty and territorial integrity. Amid this era of upheaval, it is clear that we are engaged in a great battle between democracy and autocracy. As we speak, Beijing's campaign of intimidation against the people of Taiwan remains an urgent and important priority. Last year, it was my honor to lead a congressional delegation to Taiwan where we made it clear that President Xi cannot isolate the island. In meetings with President Tsai and so many leaders, we reiterated that America stands in solidarity with the people of Taiwan who are determined to preserve their free and flourishing democracy. At the same time, the heroes of Ukraine are on the front lines, waging a ferocious fight for freedom and democracy in their own country and for the world. Their courage and resolve against Russia's brutality continues to inspire us all. Under the magnificent leadership of our President, Joe Biden, the United States is rallying the free world to stand with Ukraine. And in the Congress, there remains strong bipartisan bicameral support to provide Ukraine with the assistance needed to secure victory. Our global community must work together to ensure Putin and his government answer for their unconscionable atrocities. In the Congress, many of us are urging an aggressor state designation for Russia. 
and we are encouraged by actions the International Criminal Court has taken to hold Putin accountable. Additionally, non-proliferation must remain a pillar of our collective security. We must call out Beijing's transfer of technology that enables and encourages a nuclear Iran. And through outrageous provocative missile test, North Korea has continued to undermine peace in the Indo-Pacific. We must all continue working together to build a more secure, stable Korean peninsula. I salute each of you for your work to keep freedom at the top of the global agenda. We will defend democracy against autocracy, and now and for generations to come. Thank you for inviting me to participate today, and best wishes for a successful conference. Thank you. Thank you for insightful words. Nancy Pelosi, 전미 하원 의장님 말씀 다시 한번 감사드립니다. 정말 세계 각국의 리더들께서 저희 개회식을 빛내 주셨습니다. 이상으로 제 14회 아시안 리더십 컨퍼런스의 개회식 마치도록 하겠습니다. 다시 한번 바쁘신 와중에도 귀한 시간 내주시고 개회식을 빛내 주셔서 감사합니다. Once again, thank you for making this occasion more meaningful with your presence. 네, 무대 정리 후에 곧바로 첫 번째 세션이 진행이 됩니다. 행사장이 다소 복잡하오니 참석자 여러분. 께서는 잠시 착석해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. 잠시 무대가 정리되는 동안 앞좌석 귀빈 여러분들께서는 먼저 이동하셔도 될것 같습니다. 곧바로 첫 번째 세션이 시작되니 참석자 여러분께서는 잠시 기다려 주시기 바랍니다. Now this marks the end of the opening ceremony. In a short while, we will begin our first session. Please wait till the stage is reorganized. Thank you. Thank you.